What's up guys, Eric here. And in this video, I have one question for you. One simple question. Do you prefer scripted, well done content where you can escape from the world and you can rewatch it over and over and over again and you still love it and there's a fandom for it and you can get online and discuss it and it's got mystery and and all these other do you like that kind of content with like superheroes or even characters from novels or just original characters scripted where actors get to act and tell the stories do you like that kind of content or do you prefer completely disposable throwaway content where you can turn it on and then get on your phone or your tablet or your laptop and really not even pay attention to it. And then by the end, even if you missed the entire episode, if you watched the last two minutes of it, you know what happened. And then you'll literally never watch it again. Which one of those two things do you like? <laughs> and if you're on my channel, I can almost guarantee you feel the same way I do. And you prefer option A or number one which is really well done scripted content, okay? What is happening between Warner Brothers Discovery and now the CW has me, and I'm, and this is not the sky is falling, but I just wanna be very honest here. It has me concerned for scripted TV, really good content on broadcast media. Now, before we even read this article, and before I get into this, because we're gonna talk about this, I'm just blown away by this. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, right? I'm going to try and end this on a positive. We will get somewhere positive by the end because I know a lot of people are like, it's always so negative. It's just been a really bad couple of weeks, okay? What can I tell you? I don't know what else to say. But before we get into this article from uh, TV Line, there were some alarming things that I double-checked when it comes to like NBC, ABC that are going to show there's a shift happening. And I sort of predicted this a while ago but we'll we'll get to that at the end of this article, and I'm going to try and put a silver lining on all this. So even if it starts off a little negative, I'm sorry, but we I need to get this out of my system and, and keep you guys sort of up to date on what's going on. All right. So if you did not know, um, Next Star is it's it's official. They're getting 75% of the CW, and both uh, uh, Warner Brothers Discovery and Paramount will retain a 50 50 share on the last percentage, making it 12.5%. I think each. All right. Anyway, it says next star's plan for the CW includes targeting older viewers and adding low cost unscripted programming. All right, let's go through this. The CW likely won't be a hub for broadcast TV's teen dramas anymore following its newly announced acquisition by next star media group. It's new to everybody else. We have been talking about this for months now. During a conference call on Monday, next star president and chief operating officer, Tom Carter, shared the company's strategy for making the CW, CW profitable in the years to come, which will include content that appeals to an older audience than the CW has previously targeted. So this article is a little weird, right? Now we know that the nighttime dramas on the CW were targeting a young adult audience, right? There was a certain demo they were looking for, and that is what they went for. However, in this article, they also quote like what their average audience age is, which made me laugh. But then I thought about it like, let me go check and we'll figure it out. Because because I thought it was lie. I thought it was all cap. I'm like, there's no way this is true. But let me just say there's a possibility that it is. Uh, and part of that has to do with the fact that the younger audiences are watching content on streaming. Either live streaming it like on their browser, on their computer, their, their uh, iPad, their tablets, their phones, or watching it later on because people have things to do. They have lives and you make it easy to watch something on like the CW app. That's where people are going to watch it. And older viewers are not because they're ingrained in that old, like watching it live, uh, you know, status that they do with everything basically. All right, goes on to say, uh, as many of you are aware, the CW is currently the lowest rated broadcast network, which we believe largely ref reflects the fact that its programming is targeting for an 18 to 34 audience demographic, while the average age of the CW broadcast viewer is 58 years. Carter shared, over time, we'll be taking a different approach to our CW programming strategy. Though Nextstar's acquisition of the network won't close until the third fiscal quarter, the company will be taking over managing the CW immediately. All right, so 
you're going to say, Eric, 58 years old. I, I'm baffled by that too. I'm not a spring duckling. Is that the right term? <laughs> I don't know if that's a term. I'm not a new, a new kid on the block watching these shows. I'm not in that 18 to 34 demo, basically, is what I'm saying. But I know from my own perspective, I'm in a minority in my age group watching the CW. Like most people in my age group don't watch that network at least not the nighttime content. So I don't know where that comes from because are, I mean, are there like, is there a group of 58, 58 year olds, average age of 58 years old, uh, somewhere on a Nielsen box that is watching live television as a group? I, I just, I'm a little confused. Um, the other networks probably cater more towards an older demographic than the CW does, which is why they had that, unique audience and if they're not taking into account streaming which is something that we used to see from the cw which is why it never really turned a profit it was a distribution platform to get content to syndication if they're not thinking about that anymore and they're worried about the broadcast ratings do they actually think they're going to compete with like abc nbc cb do they think that's going to happen because i don't think it is maybe they believe that it will be but I, I don't see it. And part of the problem with that is, at least up until this point, is the CW has not shown the same content in all of its markets. It's got a very, like, disjointed market. But anyway, let's let's go over here. I want to um, I want to share something quite interesting uh, with everyone as we move through this. So this is a just a shot of the CW uh, schedule, right? Sorry, it's so tiny. I'm gonna read it anyway. So we're just going to pick Wednesday. We're going to pick a middle of the day, a middle of the week day. <laughs> and we're going to look at what they have on the majority of the time because their nighttime programming takes up two, sometimes three hours of the block. But what takes up the majority of the CW's programming in almost every market? And that would be their daytime programming, which is a weird way to market your nighttime programming around your daytime programming. But here we are. So their daytime programming is stuff like Divorce Court, Judge Jerry, Maury, the Steve Wilco Show, Maury, Nick Cannon, then you've got News, Judge Jerry, Judge Jerry, Divorce Court, Divorce Court, Steve Wilco Show, Nick Cannon, and then you have a couple of hours or an hour of Family Guy, Mysteries Decoded, and then a bunch of like syndicated shows, Wellington Paranormal Syndicated, Goldberg Syndicated, Bob's Burger Syndicated, Blackish Syndicated, Schitt's Creek Syndicated. Um, yeah. It, this would be a 58-year-old market. This, this to me, is a 58-year-old market. If you look all the way up until, like, the, you know, primetime hours, we'll, ju we'll just ignore the primetime shows. But if you look at everything throughout the day, I don't know about y'all, but when I would stay with my grandmother, this is the kind of stuff that would be on TV. Like, you know, back then it was different. It was like Oprah or Donahue or it was, it was talk shows, but it was basically the same stuff. And you turn it on and then your TV just runs and you just do shit around your house. That's what you do. This would be like a 58 year old market. The nighttime stuff is syndicated stuff. As you can see, they're playing stuff that other networks have produced. I believe that Wellington Paranormal is from New Zealand. Um, Goldberg's is an ABC show, I think. I'm not sure about uh, Bob's Burger and Blackish, but I know Shit's Creek was on a Canadian network. So these are all like, those are all syndicated shows, right? They're not, they're not shows that you would, that the network is making. They're saving money by now playing syndicated content from other networks they want to change that all right and uh let's go back here we're going to go back to the article <clears throat> sorry about this I'm jumping around quite a bit go back to this article here and it goes um carter also noted that in the near future the cw will add more cost-effective unscripted programming and high quality syndicated programming to its lineup now, you'll notice that high-quality syndicated program is in quotations. 
um, which he indicates is a departure from the prior predominant focus on expensive original scripted content, which is uncommon among major broadcast networks. High quality syndicated programming. This is investor talk. This is what we got from the Warner Brothers Discovery meeting, where it's like, we don't want to make content unless it's high quality content, but on a budget that constitutes a much lower grade of programming. So you expect me to believe that you're you're going to give me like Game of Thrones and Stranger Things and shows like that on a CW budget even though you've said that your age demographic is 58. I don't believe that. Okay. I, I feel like I've been saying that a lot over the last couple of weeks. Let's share. I'm just going to share a couple quick tabs here as we go through this. This is the NBC schedule. We're just going to pick a random day. I don't know. Wednesday, I guess. Um, you know, they have their news and stuff. We get into the prime time. Look at this back to back eight o'clock. America's Got Talent, and 9 o'clock Password. Two reality shows, one of them a talent competition, the other one a game show, extremely cheap, that pulls in family viewers that turns over lots of ad revenue. And both of those are shows that people are most likely going to watch live, which is why the ad revenue is so much better. And you don't have to worry about people streaming it later on because they're most likely going to be watching it live. And then at 10 o'clock, we get a scripted show, which is Chicago PD. So our scripted content comes on at the tail end of primetime. And out of three hours, only one of them is a show that is uh, scripted content. Let's take a look at ABC. Let's take a look and see what ABC's got going on um, over here. Look, 8 o'clock, all the way through to 9.30, to 10 o'clock is The Bachelorette. Two hours of reality content. Two hours of it. This is what they want the CW to be. They want the CW to be a reality TV network at this point. All right. I also want to add that the CW picked up recently a show called The Great Chocolate Showdown, which was on Hulu. All the seasons were on Hulu, and the CW picked it up and started airing it as if it was a brand new show. Very weird. All right, let's wrap this up. Um, as for the fate of the current CW originals like All American and Superman and Lois, no updates were given on their futures. Carter confirmed, though, that the CW's current co-owners, Warner Brother Discovery and Paramount Global, both of which retain a 12.5% minority stake in the network, will continue to produce original scripted content, primarily for the 22-23 broadcast season. Beyond that, Nextstar will extend its creative partnership with the two companies, if mutually agreeable. So... I'm not going to lie. I'm extremely concerned. The direction of WB Discovery with HBO Max and Discovery Plus now seem to be veering towards this. Um, and now CW is doing this. The reason why this is worrying to me is they control content that doesn't fit within this spectrum. Right? They have content like DC, Harry Potter, other things in their wheelhouse that feel like they're not going to get any more space on these two platforms. And so I'm a little bit concerned. I would say after 2023, I would not be surprised if either WBD or Paramount, one of the two or both, completely pull away from the CW and the CW becomes a syndication hub of reality TV content. Especially if they're trying to focus on an age group that only cares about watching things live or putting them on in the background. That's, it's very concerning. However, I promised a silver lining. So let me try and put a little silver lining on this. 
say for example, I'm completely wrong and that none of this is actually what it seems to be, even though it seems like it is, it's quite possible that the, the WB Discovery put up some really good shows for the CW. Like they continue to do Stargirl. They continue to do Superman and Lois. We get like something better down the road. Another really great show from WB that gives them two to three shows a week to put out that they're willing to put out. Maybe even two a week. Maybe we just get Stargirl and Superman and Lois. Maybe that's the silver lining. Maybe that's what's going to happen. Maybe CW is like, after trying this experiment, they're like, this doesn't work. We want to buy more content from WB. Can we talk to Greg Berlanti? Can we get something else? That's always a possibility as well. I don't know what the likeliness of that is. Um, but it's very clear to me here that this could go either direction, but Tom Carter, and by the way, Mark Pedowitz is still currently going to stay on as president. Don't know how long that's going to last. Tom Carter seems to be very um, empowered in the sense of trying to make money, the same as David Zaslav is with WBD. So I would say the sky might not be falling yet, but don't be surprised if something major happens and we all get very disappointed. But again, possible silver lining is maybe it just means we're going to get more high quality content. I want to be wrong. Make it very clear here. I want to be wrong. I want them to continue to put out high quality content. But it sounds to me and it looks to me like all network television, ABC, NBC, and now CW are skewing to reality TV. This is that rubber band effect. We had a bunch of reality TV in the early 2000s. And then we got premium TV with like Netflix and all of these streaming services. And then everything bounced away from reality TV because the networks wanted to compete with premium. Now they don't care. They're like, oh, there's a market for reality TV. So we're swinging back to that. So we're going to see even more reality TV. I predicted this. If you go back to my after parties from like the last two years, I saw this coming and I was right about it. But I don't like being right when it's something that I'm not happy about. So there we have it. Um, I'm going to leave it there. Uh, don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I, I am curious what you guys think. So do you think this is like worst case scenario situation? Or do you believe that this just means they're going to focus on quality over quantity? I'm very curious to what you think. Look, if you're brand new to my channel, hit the subscribe button, become part of the Eric verse. Love to have you over here. Uh, give me a like, leave a comment down below. If you want to support the channel, there's, there's a super thanks down there, the little heart, hit that, leave a super comment, or become a Team Eric member and participate in uh, Team Eric member exclusives. And you also get custom badge emojis for the live streams we do every single week. So thank you so much again, you guys. Um, definitely tell me your thoughts and opinions, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.